guys, it's Carmen here. I am a homeschool mom of four kids, and I wanted to talk to you today about homeschooling. So currently, what our society is looking at is navigating this coronavirus. So whether you are choosing to homeschool or you are being put into a position where you have no option but to homeschool, I wanted to give you my story and show you a little bit about why I do what I do and how. So we're gonna be answering the questions of what do I do, uh, why do I do it, and um, who do I homeschool, how do I do it, when and where. So just some of these simple questions and then I'll be bringing on some friends and some other homeschool moms to give some context to it too. So first of all, why do I homeschool? Well. I believe that 18 years of life compared to the whole lifespan of just one of my child, 18 years is such a short time that I want to be with them. I like my kids, so I want to have them around. I want to have the opportunity to make memories and to teach them and things like that. So why I do it is because really I want to, I want to build that foundation in their life. And then what I do is First of all, I have to know the tools that I bring to the table as a mom and as their leader. So there are a couple of tools that I use that have just come my way through the last years of my life that have tremendously helped me. So one of them is I wanted to know what my personality is so that I can operate in the best way possible. So I used what is called the personality elements profile test. And so I don't know how well you can see this, but it's called the PEP test. And just like any personality profile test that's out there, it asks you the basic questions based on years of psychological research. If you've taken a personality test, you, it's probably very similar. It's just that the results are different. The language that is brought to the results is different. So the language of the results here are the elements of the earth fire, earth, water, and wind. And so it comes with this nice little bar graph that can show you different things about it. So for example, my main personality strength is wind. And so this is an online test and then you get emailed your results. You can print them out and discuss them and things like that and have a coach unpack that with you, which is what I did. And so now I kind of understand that. So I can now operate within the boundaries of my personality and I can know that that's a strength and I can optimize on that. And then I can also notice and identify what are my weaknesses. And instead of having those really get me down, I can go, okay, I, I acknowledge this and how do I navigate through this? So going back to the personality elements profile test, for example, since wind is my primary strength, wind thrives on meeting new people. Um, gaining recognition and approval, short-term goals, variety, freedom to express ideas, openness, activity, and time for fun. I'll get to that in a little bit. I definitely love time for fun. Wind dislikes being ignored, working alone, confining responsibilities and routines, paperwork, formality, and deceit. So a personal element uh, of personal coaching piece of this is wind can be more successful if it will think before speaking, plan more and prepare earlier. And I know if my family is watching this, they're going, yes, that's her, ha ha ha. Okay, have your laugh, have your laugh, and we'll get right back to this. Um, so again, like this is just a tool that I use to be able to say, okay, this is who I am. These are the strengths that I bring to the table. So it tells, it helps me bring language to energy, how I focus, motivation, how I produce, reactions, how I balance life and things like that. So these are things that I already know about myself. This just gives me the language to be able to understand and then to even discuss that with people that I'm in relationship, like my husband, my kids and things like that. So moving right along. Um, another tool that I use is um, the Strengths Finders 2.0. It looks like this. And none of these are a sponsor of this video. Uh, these are just really valuable tools that I think have been immensely helpful in my life. So my strengths are woo, belief, developer, connectedness, and includer. So woo stands for winning others over. I'll read you the first and the last sentence from this on here. Woo stands for winning others over. In your world, there are no strangers, only friends you haven't met yet. Lots of them. So I love that because I love to interact with people 
and to connect with them and to find common ground with them. And I can be sitting across from you for the first time and ask, hey, where do you go? Where do you get your hair done? Or where'd you get your shoes or whatever? And it doesn't even bother me to start a conversation. So, um, but in the, in the world of homeschool, I want to know what my strengths are because with my kids, like I want to win them over so that I can have influence with them in school time and in learning time and in life and in growing. So the other last tool that I wanted to show you that I use in my personal life is John Maxwell, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And this is just a leadership book. It's not a homeschool book. It's not a mom book or anything. It's simply a leadership book. And the reason why this is important is because as a mom or a dad or a grandparent or whoever you are in your child's life, you are a leader. And so I take it seriously that I'm not just a mom, but I'm a leader in their life and I'm the leader in the foundational years of their life. So each chapter is a law. So there's 21. And, um, for example, number one is the law of the lid. And there's this graph in here that shows, um, your success dedication and your leadership ability. So you can be dedicated to success and highly successful in your life or in what you do. But if your leadership lid is low, then you won't be able to maximize that success in your life, your lid will keep you from, um, from influence and effectiveness. And so a tagline that he says is leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. So somebody is influencing your child. Who will it be? I hope it's going to be you and I hope it's going to be for the positive. And in my life, I want it to be me and I want it to be for the positive. So that is why I homeschool. That's kind of what I do to be able to know what I bring to the table. And this took me years to work on to go through these tools and to understand them and have the language to it and then just to own who I am and what I bring to the table. So if you're thrust into this mission of homeschooling and you don't have time to make up years of learning, um, all that kind of stuff, then let me just encourage you. It can be as simple as this. Sit down and write out what are the things that you're really good at and what are the things that matter to you and start from there and just know that, hey, this is what I bring to the table and this is what I have to offer. So um, that's why, that's what I do. Um, so as a curriculum, I do something called classical conversations and we'll get more into that at another time. I just wanted to let you know, that's what I do. You can use a million and two different ways to homeschool your child and various curriculums it's just a world to get lost in if you just look up homeschool curriculums or go to a homeschool convention or whatever it would be. doesn't look like any conventions are in our near future at this point in time. But having said that, let me tell you about who I homeschool. I homeschool a 17-year-old boy. Actually, he'll be 18 tomorrow. So I have less than 24 hours left until one of my children is an adult. And in fact, I took him to the dentist today and I was signing his consent forms. I said, you know, starting tomorrow, you're going to be signing your own consent forms. So I, I homeschool a 17, almost 18 year old boy. He's a senior. He is working two jobs and they're each kind of like part-time gigs. Um, and they are jobs that are in our circle of life. Um, people that we know and do life with and another story for another time. Um, one of them is at a coffee shop. One of them is at a studio at our church. And um, he has time for volunteering. He does serving. He attends um, other groups with other kids. So um, I homeschool a 13-year-old girl, about to be 14. Had to stop and think about that because her birthday is, we have a cluster of like springtime birthdays. So 17 going on 18, 13 year old girl going on 14 and she's finishing up her eighth grade year and she is a dancer. She is a creative mind. She is an out of the box thinker. She's an artist. She's a gamer as far as like, um, Star Wars, um, RPG, uh, things like that. So, um, she is a very assertive person, strong person, and she will be going into ninth grade. I homeschool an 11 year old boy and, um, he has some special needs. His special needs are rooted back to the story of 
when he was born and what happened then. Again, another story for another time. But he um, has physical special needs that translate into the daily grind of how we do what we do. And that in turn affects the rhythm of our life and what we are able to accomplish and how that affects our other kids and things like that. So I'll get into that more another time. But he has physical special needs. He uses a wheelchair. He uses a walker. He needs physical assistance with certain everyday tasks. And then I have an eight-year-old boy who is very playful. He just turned eight. Fresh eight-year-old there. Um, He's playful. He can go with the flow. He is a huge help, a huge helper. Um, Just super fast learner. So those are the ages I have. And then these are the, this is how, this is, this, these are the student types that I have to deal with. Okay. So, um, out of my four kids, one is an independent learner, strong researcher, like kind of, I can give the work and it, and it's done. Um, I don't have to be side by side. One of them is, um, brilliant, strong with logic, has a special learning disability in the form of dyslexia. Um, one of them has a physical disability and has no cognitive disability, no learning disability, just, um, the physical disability. And then one is a really fast learner, great at spelling, great at reading. Um, and it seems to come by it all easily. So I have quite a wide variety of ages and quite a wide variety of learning styles and abilities in that. I guess I'll also say that, um, they each have different learning styles. So for example, um, one learning style can be kinesthetic where it's like, a, you know, movement helps you, helps you learn, helps you retain. That's me. If I'm throwing a ball and doing spelling, then I can remember it. If I'm, um, snapping to the rhythm of something and like reciting it, I can remember it. So I'm very kinesthetic. I do not want to be sitting down for very long at a table. I want to be out there moving. So, um, that's that's the style that I bring and that I connect with. Um, one of my children is an audible learner. Actually, a couple of my children are audible learners. And so if you give them a book to read, they're not going to retain it as well as if they're hearing uh, what's what their information is. So, for example, um, we do embrace the audible app for literature. So for our exposition in literature, as long as we can find it available as an audible book, we choose that. So as long as if my child is listening and able to perform a task like cleaning their room or practicing dance or playing with Legos, as long as they can retain what they're hearing, then I allow them to do the secondary task. And that's not for every child. That's not for every household, but that works. I found that that works for us. And so, um, there are, um, just a variety of ways that people do learn. And, um, I think it's really important to know your child and to be able to, um, accommodate that. So very commonly when people find out that I homeschool, they're like, Oh, I could never do that. Or I, uh, I, I would just, we would just kill each other or whatever. And my challenge to that is yes, you could do that and give it a try and give yourself a little bit of grace and give your kids a little bit of break. And, um, so everybody kind of has their own, their own method. So, um, moving right along to how, how do I homeschool? I homeschool through a variety of various methods. Like I said, I do classical conversations, which by nature for the elementary years, it's a lot of repetitive memory work. So, um, like I said, we might be tossing a ball and doing when I have the ball, I say the sentence when I toss it and you have the ball, you have, you repeat the sentence. So there's a couple of things at work there. There is having a talking piece, which means when it, when you have it, it's your turn to talk. You have permission. You can say whatever you need to say. Um, and when you don't have the talking piece, you're doing active listening. You're honing in on what's being said. You're paying attention to the person who is talking. So there's a couple of elements in those elementary years that you can pull in. We're always doing more than school. So if you think about it, like life is school. It's more than textbook work. It's more than just the content and the information. It is the tools in how to learn. So we are doing active listening in those, throwing the ball, 
taking turns, repetitive memorizing. Um, that's one method of how I do it. Um, another method is there is a time to sit down and to focus on the task at hand. And so, for example, we do cursive writing. I don't know if schools expect this or even offer it, but um, I do. I have access to cursive books. So we have cursive writing. Um, we have uh, cursive writing for math terms and cursive writing for history and cursive writing for, uh, I can't really remember. Um, then we have like the individual letters for the younger kids and small words for the younger kids. So there is a time to sit down, attend to your task and do cursive. Um, there are times where I may be reading out loud to them the content of science or history or whatever it would be. And I'm allowing my daughter to draw while her little brothers play Legos. And they have to learn at that time that they can play quietly and they can listen. And I will um, let them know that as long as they are listening, they can continue playing. So I'll stop every now and then and ask a question about the content that I just read. And if they, if they know and they're listening, they get to keep playing. If not, then they, then they have to put their tools, toys away and just listen. So a couple of things in that moment is they know that if they abide by the boundaries and the rules, then they get to do that thing. So again, just learning kind of how to do life along with actually doing the subjects. Um, and so that's how I do it. I, I really like to do activities, to do hands on, and perhaps in another, um, another video, I'll show you kind of literally how I do it, but, um, always remember why, like if you can make that vision statement and write it down somewhere. I have a chalkboard wall in my kitchen. So if I need to remember something or remember context, I will write it literally out on the wall so that I can see it when I'm eating breakfast or when I'm fixing the kids food or whatever. It's a reminder of, I think you should always go back in times of frustration or difficulty. Like, why am I doing this? And remember the context of it all. Um, when I homeschool, the win of homeschool is it comes back around to do what's best for you. So some people are like, how, how is the right way to homeschool? Well, in my opinion, the right way to homeschool is the way that works best for you and the way that works best for your family and the way that works best for your kids. So you are the only one living your life with your certain set of circumstances, with your children who have their own personalities and their own set of circumstances. And as a parent, you know them best. So for people who go, oh, I could never do that. I would ask who, who taught your child how to walk? Who taught your child how to eat with a spoon? Who taught your child how to go to bed at night? Who taught your child how to tie their shoes or whatever? Well, it's you, like, you know, your child the best. And yes, even if you don't have years of professional education behind you, you know, your child and you can do what they need. I, I believe that strongly. Okay. So when is, um, really just do what's best for you. So because going back to the strengths finders or sorry, the, the path, the personality elements profile test, because my wind is so great. Um, I like to not do the same routine every day. I like to not be tied down every day to like at eight o'clock, we're gonna do this. At nine o'clock, we're gonna do this. Now I have friends who are very organized and very punctual and very rhythmic. my earth friends who perhaps they do that and that's what works best for them. But as you can see this, um, this one right here, whoop, right here, see how great that is? That's the wind and it's 73% um, in my life, so. It's a lot. So I say that to say, um, if it's going to be 75 degrees and sunny, then we're going to pack up and go to the park and the kids are going to take their scooters and rip sticks and skateboards. And they're going to get a little bit of the energy out. And then we're going to come back together and we're going to sit down and we're going to do our reading or our writing. But first we're going to go get some energy out because really that's what mama needs. <laughs> and so it gives them memories. It gives them fun. It gives them fresh air and sunshine. Um, I don't like to feel boxed in. What happens when you put wind in a box? 
it dies. And so I feel like I am suffocating. I have to be boxed into the same routine every day. Again, that's just me. Um, I have friends who feel like they are going to just lose their minds if they have to just go by the seat, fly by the seat of their pants every day. I'm not saying that's what I do, but I am saying that when you have the flexibility from day to day, then um, I say use it. So um, we have what I would say a broad umbrella structure of what our week looks like. And then day to day, I can kind of make it what it needs to be. Um, so they can get all of their subjects in, but there's a little bit of flexibility for that. Um, and then where do I homeschool? That kind of goes into where? Um, at home, at the kitchen table, um, on the trampoline in the backyard. I have read to my kids while they jump on the trampoline. And then again, just doing that quality check of, hey, what did this just say? Tell me about this. Asking those questions to check in and be sure that they're listening. Um, I have um, done school in the car. If you have access to, you know, the Audible or any types of songs that go along with your curriculum or, um, you know, podcast or YouTube or whatever, um, you can do it in the car. Uh, we have a coffee shop, and so there have been times where we've gone down to the coffee shop and we've done our schoolwork there, and that's always a lot of fun. Change of scenery is great. Um, and then again, like at the park. Now, current situation, you may not have the ability or the right to go out into public places like that. So what can you do in your home to make it an experience worth doing? I don't know. You know, do you have a back deck that's shaded that would be fresh air that you can go on I, whatever your circumstances are you can definitely do it where you don't have to be in one place at one time and if that's what works for your child then do that put them at the table every day if that's what they need um so again what's the best way to homeschool the best way to homeschool is the way that works for you and um i think that's just circling back to how i began this video i just think that it's important to know yourself and to know what strengths you bring and to be able to identify in your child, what type of learner are they? You might not know that until you kind of go through a couple of different trial and, and error things, and that's fine. Um, figure it out through trial and error. Um, the main comments I hear is, oh, I could never do that. And yes, you can. Um, oh, I would hate that. I would challenge you to try it and find out. I, I don't think that you'll hate it. Um, the main concerns that I have as a mom, I have to say, is um, I kind of go through patterns of, I love this, this is amazing, and then it kind of kind of goes into, I don't know about this, why am I doing this? And then it kind of circles around to, am I enough? Are, are my kids gonna know enough? Like, am I gonna be the lid on their life using the language of 21 laws? Um, you know, am I going to be the lid? How do I raise my lid? How do I become enough to be able to do this? Um, definitely there are highs and lows daily, weekly, monthly, sometimes year to year. And you really don't know until you get into it. So my encouragement to you is um, for whatever reason you have begun this homeschooling journey, give it a try, give it all you've got, but also Get a good support group around you. Um, you know, who do you know that can pour into your life things that uh, will help you and will challenge you and people who will speak the truth to you and help you troubleshoot and figure out the problem. So um, I think it's important to know your own strengths and know what you can and can't do. Know your kids and then know what your limits are so that you can have people around you speaking into your life and what's needed. Um, so that's kind of the who, what, why, where, when, how. I hope that you found this video useful and there'll be more information coming. I would love to introduce you to some of my good friends who also homeschool and offer you a variety of people who approach it differently, who have different set of home circumstances, who have different um, needs and challenges, and um, we'll see you next time.